Welcome everybody, in this tutorial we're going to go over the Unreal Engine 5 basics. What you need for this tutorial is the latest version of Unreal Engine. To do that just click here and you want to just select the latest version of Unreal Engine 5. As I've got that it won't show up but you want to select 5.0.2. Once you've done that just click launch and let that load. From here click games and we want a blank project. Let's just call this UE basics. Let's leave it at blueprint, desktop and quality at maximum. And you can either enable or disable starter content, but we want that enabled. Click create and let that create. Now, once that has loaded, just click update and you may be thinking what is this what is this and what is this we're going to go over this in this tutorial so we're just going to show you what what's on the screen and what everything does so firstly what we want to know is how can we move in the world or the editor right now this screen is our editor if we want to look around you hold right click and you can look around now if you want to be able to move hold right click and use the WASD to move you can combine right click with WASD and looking around while holding right click to look around and move so that's how to control your camera in the world we can also use mouse scroll up and down to zoom up and down or in and out and if you want to go in a top down view you can select top to go orthographic mode and bottom left right front and back however if you want to see without wireframe if you want to see in a lit mode you can just select the view mode and click lit you can go unlit too to see without shading and wireframe once again detail lighting only but for now let's stick with lit and perspective from here let's go and discuss the view modes lit shows the scene with lighting unlit without lighting wireframe in a wire mode so you can see how many triangles each mesh has and detail lighting only shows detail lighting lighting only shows the lights in the scene and you have reflections shown these are quite useful for level design and seeing complexity of models and seeing how they react with lighting in the scene these are not applied in the game these are just simply for debugging next we have this tab called show this allows us to toggle and turn off certain things in our level so if we want to hide static meshes so these are static meshes a mesh is just any object placed or in our content browser if we disable these you can see all the objects are hidden but if we click static meshes again and show them they appear now Skeletal meshes are a different type of mesh. Skeletal meshes are objects that contain bones. For example, our character is a skeletal mesh because it has a hierarchy of bones. But a static mesh is just simply an object without any bones. For example, a chair would have no bones because there's no points that need to be modified. For example, there isn't a leg that can fold out. But from here, now we have on the right our gizmos so if we select this chair we can move it forward left or right up and down and this is the movement gizmo we have the rotation gizmo if we select the chair and click this you can rotate it and side to side 
and then you have the scale gizmo increase its size and you can decrease its size so now we have snapping if you select this grid it allows us to snap in increments of 10 if we turn it off then there is no snapping we can move it freely and to any accuracy we want we can change this let's set this to 5 while well, this snapping is enabled for rotation for location sorry and you can see it's a bit more accurate if we go to 1 it's much more accurate but if we go to something like 100 you can see it's a lot more and there is less accuracy and you can see the world grid has changed as well but let's just set that back to 10 now it's the same with rotation in degrees of 10 but let's say we want by 5 degrees there you go and let's say 45 degrees each time and it's the same principle for scale it increases by 2.5 0 0.25 and we can change this. let's just set that back at 0 0.25 now lastly we have our camera speed right now if we hold right click and move around we can see our camera speed is quite fast if we turn it down to 2 it's much slower and same for this now the camera speed scalar basically changes how strong 4 is so we set this to 5 4 becomes much faster we set it to something like 0.5 or 1 it's much slower so it allows us to go past 8 without actually going past 8 from here now we have our level editor so if we select any object or asset or light we can move it around rotate and scale now we have our details panel so if we select something you can see we have a details panel this gives us all the information we need about a certain object or an asset in general you can see the transform so it's location, rotation and scale in the world if we change that from here you can see our updates we have the static mesh so the actual object it's referencing so if we type couch you can see it updates to the couch now from here you have the material applied by default it references the material in the static mesh which is m underscore chair in the actor tab we have can be damaged initial lifespan and spawn collision handling so always spawn ignore collisions and we don't need to mess around with this because it's not damageable LOD stands for level of detail the further away we get the less detailed it becomes the closer we get the more detailed it becomes and this is handled automatically by the engine just to save performance in miscellaneous we have packaging and we don't need to worry about this we have physics so you can ignore impulses things like that constrain you can set it to simulate physics its weight things like that and in rendering we have our material how it reacts to lighting do we want to cast a shadow yes or no let's turn that off and it gets rid of its shadow that's it for now streaming how it's streamed in the world we don't need to worry about this and all just shows everything combined now this error here says lighting needs to be rebuilt one unbuilt object so anytime we modify the skylight or the light source we must build our lighting again but if we want our light to be dynamic so we don't want to build each time it's modified 
So this might be in the case of a dynamic lighting system where the time updates in game we can just set the mobility to movable because in our game it will not be stationary for now we can just set it to stationary now we have our world settings now our world settings has game mode so what a game mode does is it's specific rules depending on the game we're playing so if we're in the lobby we will have a different type of game mode and in that game mode blueprint we'll have a specific rules for that game state which is being in the lobby but by default we have no game mode when you have a game mode you go into your world settings and you plug it in here And what this gamer does is it allows you to define certain classes. So the default pawn class, which is the default player class, it will be set here, the HUD class, etc. And these will all be automatically set depending on the game mode base and what you've selected. Now from here, you have the save button. It saves the level to the current disk and select mode it allows you to change into building modes landscape foliage modeling etc here you have import here you have create a blueprint here you have the level sequencer this is used for making or this is used for recording quick animation and here you have the play button so you play this you can actually test your game and we can look around and currently we're at spectator mode because there is no game mode and here you can just test in different virtual machines now lastly we have the outliner what this outliner does it shows everything that is present in the world so if we click on something like start a background queue you can see our sound file and if we click on the details panel we can find out more about it if we click here it browses us to the asset and you can hear it's just the bird sounds we might want to change this why don't we try clicking on this smoke sound and then plug it in we can just click this and type it in so now if we play we hear the smoke instead the closer we get the louder it is, the farther we get, the less quiet it is. Now, from here, you're able to quickly find assets. Let's say I want to find the floor. I can quickly just do snap view to the object. So I can quickly find it. And if I want to quickly find something and move it, I can just click in the outliner, share. and the other chair now we have the content drawer this is where files are stored within the project if you want to create a blueprint you right click and create the blueprint class through here and you select any one of these and it will be stored in the content drawer next we have the output log anything that's outputted into the log is displayed here and then we have the command prompt where you can type console commands to, for development or debugging. If we want to show collision, you would type it in here. That's it for this episode. I hope you've learned something. We've covered the basics of how to use the engine. In upcoming tutorials, I will show you how to create blueprints so you can program the game for what you want to implement.